again, here's a reminder. Rational versus irrational. Irrational, they're going to be underneath a radical, and they're going to be like a not repeating number. Okay? Everything else, rational. Okay? So when we're sorting these, where does negative one half go? Okay? Negative square root of two. Irrational. Square root of 36? Rational because it's actually simplified to six, right? 2.8. Okay. Irrational for pi. Seven is rational. Two thirds is rational. Four fifths is rational. Square root of seven is irrational. And negative three is rational. These always pop up on your SAT or they pop up in like algebra two for no reason. Like you have to know the difference and it just, it, it's just so random. So with that being said, this will come up multiple times. If you just memorize it, then you can move on with your life. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about how to simplify radicals. You saw this last year in eighth grade. Um, so let's kind of review it and talk about it. Okay. So on here, somebody remind me, what is area? What's the formula for area? Do you remember? Area is length times width. Boom. Okay, cool. All right. So if our length is three and our width is three, what is our area going to be? Nine. And look at how many boxes there are. Nine, right? So if our length is one, two, three, four, five, five, and our width is five, what's our area going to be? 25. And you could count those up. Can you take a moment? Can you fill in this last one? Oh, what was our side length? And six. Six times six is 36. Okay. So now, if you have an area of 81 and you want the side length, what is that going to be? Why? Okay. So nine times nine would give you 81, right? So our side length would be nine. Questions on that so far? Fantastic. Okay, so there are two different ways. You want me to go back? I can go back. Yeah. There are two different ways to simplify radicals. I'm going to show you both ways. You get to pick which way you want to do, okay? So you remember this list back in like eighth grade? Do those look familiar? If I said one squared, two squared, three squared, four squared, five squared, six squared, seven squared, eight squared, nine squared, 10 squared. That's what each one of these things are. These are called perfect squares. Okay, write those on your paper. What you're gonna do is, what is the biggest factor from this list of 48. So if I took 48 and I divide it by one of these numbers, which one would work? Say again. Which one? 16. Okay, 16 times what would give me 48? It's okay to use a calculator. You're gonna need a calculator on this one. You either use your phone, use a yellow calculator, use Desmos. 16 times what? Three, three. Yeah, that's close. 
Now, what is the square root of 16? Four. Good. So we're going to cross out the 16, put 4. And we're going to multiply 4 times this number out front. So we're going to have 4 times 5, square root of 3. So what's 4 times 5? 20, square root of 3. That simplified. Make sense? Okay. Is this rational or irrational? Irrational, why? It's not a whole number. Okay, so it's not a whole number, not a repeating decimal, and doesn't terminate. Um, terminate means not uh, to stop. So, like, have you ever seen the Terminator? Okay, so like he was gonna go. So the other way to do this is to do prime factorization. So basically what you do with this one is you factor out all these numbers um, and then you get to the end. But you have to have an exit buddy in order to come out of the radical. So because my first period has never seen this movie, I thought I should show it to you. Okay, so have y'all seen that movie before? Ah, not the no. Oh my god. Oh, it came out in like 2003, which was crazy because y'all weren't born yet, right? That's crazy. Ah, I was in third grade. I was in third grade. Okay, so with that being said, you have to have an exit buddy in order to exit the radical. So let me make that make sense. All right, let's say. I'm not good at my whole like factoring thing. I know that 12 is an even number, right? Can I divide 12 by two? Yeah, what do I get? Okay, and then can I divide six by something? What can I divide it by two? Two. And what does that give me? Three, right? So we need to have an exit buddy. You see how there is a pair of twos? I'm going to circle those and pull it outside the radical. What I'm left with is this three right here. So I'm left with that three and that three is gonna chill inside the radical. Does that make sense? Okay, and this is also irrational, right? Okay, simple enough right now, right? Okay, so you break it down and then you pull it outside the radical if it's got a partner. But if it doesn't, it stays in the little radical. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about volume. Throw back to physical science back in middle school. What is volume? how much space something takes up, right? The formula for volume is length times width times height. Very similar to area, we just add a third dimension to it, okay? 
So if we have a side length of three, we're going to say three times three times three. What does that get me? Three times three times three. You're going to have to use a calculator. 27. You're going to have to use a calculator in this unit. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. What about eight? If we had a side length of eight, tell me what I get. Don't stare at me. Type something either in your phone, into your calculator, the Desmos. Don't care what you use. Eight times eight times eight. What is it? 512. Fantastic. Now, if we have a volume of eight, what would be the side length? So now you're doing it backwards. We have the volume. We want the side length. What number can we multiply by itself to get us eight? I know one times one times one doesn't work. What about the next number? Two. Two times two times two gives us eight, right? So we would have a side length of two. Okay. So your perfect cubes, let's have that conversation. That's going to be 1, 8, 27, 64, 125, 216. That's the first six. I wouldn't really memorize after that. Because these are the, the six that you're probably going to need to know. Okay, so that's one cube, two cube. Three cube. I don't think he's going to pull you over and ask you that. But you know what? If he does, you can come back to me and tell me that I was wrong. I will be okay with that. I think the only time that you'll ever use cube is if, like, you're in engineering. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm yep 216 okay so we've got two different methods we've got the perfect cube method which is not my favorite and then we got the prime factorization so negative 250 which one of these can i divide negative 250 by If something ends in like a zero or a five, it can also be divisible by something that ends in a zero or a five. Fun fact. So which one of these ends in a five? There we go. So 250 divided by 125 gives me what? You're gonna have to use a calculator. Two, right? Everybody with me so far? I use my perfect cubes list, and then here we are. Now, what is the cube root of 125? What's the cube root of 125? Five, right? So we're gonna pull the five out to the front. There's a three in that little cubby hole right here, and then you've got two. Now with cubes, if you have a negative chilling in here, you're going to pull him out to the front. Okay, so let's try the other method. We've got 40. What can I divide 40 by? Two. Okay, so 40 divided by two gives us 20. Can I divide 20 by two? Yeah, that gives me 10. I can do 10 divided by two. That gives me five. Can I divide anything else through here? No. Now. Right here, it says what we need to make our group be. Okay, so instead of having like just a buddy, you have to have a group of three on this one. Okay, so we see that we have three twos. So we're gonna pull out a two and put it next to this two up here. So we have two times two, the cube root, and we're left over with this five chilling down here. Right. But there's no negative, so we don't, we don't mess with that. Two times two would just give us four. 
cube root of five. It's top. So we've got a cube root of 24. So we are needing to make a group of three. So I don't know my perfect cube. So I'm going to divide it by two because that's easy. If you divided it by something else, that's okay as long as you get to the same answer. If I divide it by two again, I'm going to get six. Two again, that's going to give me three. I have to make a group of three. I see right here, I've got a group of three. So that's going to give me two cube root of three. Ta da! If you would have used your perfect cubes, Remember, your perfect cubes are 1, 8, see, I don't even know what number it is. So, if you do it that way, you're going to get 8 and 3. The cube root of 8 is 2, so you would get 2 cube root of 3. So, you get the same thing. You want to get to the ends where they can't be divided by anymore. Like, it's it's number in itself. So like if I, yeah, you can divide by two or you can divide by other numbers. I could have done this like this. All right, shh. I could have divided it like this. What about four and six? I can divide four, right? I can break that down into two and two, right? What about six? I can do two and three. Well, see, there's still a group of twos and there's a three at the end. So it doesn't matter what you break it down by as long as it's factors of that number. That makes sense? Okay, this requires a lot of practice. You do not get this miraculously, especially if your multiplication skills are not very strong, okay? So what I'd like for you to do is you have a tic-tac-toe sheet, okay? I want you to be on game one and you're gonna decide who is gonna be player one and who's gonna be player two. You're gonna work with people who are around your seat. Don't get up and move across the room to go work with somebody. You're gonna show all your work. Before taking the square, both players must agree on the final answer. If player two disagrees, they must explain the mistake. Player two can steal the square. Then player two chooses a square and then repeats the process, okay? I'm going to tell you now, on your mastery check, you can only use those yellow calculators. For square roots, if you type the original problem into that yellow calculator, it simplifies it for you. It tells you what the answer is. You have to figure out how to do the process. So if you wanna check your work, you can use the yellow calculator. You must know how to do it though. If you don't show work, you don't get credit. Does everybody understand? Okay. So go ahead and decide who's gonna, this is telling me groups of two, right? That's what this is telling me. So I want a group of two. I got two fives right here with one left over. So I'm gonna take this five, I'm gonna multiply it by that four out front. So four times five, and we're gonna leave the five underneath the radical. Anybody with me on these numbers? But now we're going to talk about the letters. So we have six ins, and we want to make groups of two. So groups of two. How many groups do I have? This is going to be into the third on the outside. I have five Ps. We want a group of two. How many groups do we have? Two with how many left over? Oh, we're going to simplify this. What's four times five? 20. So we're going to have 20 in cubed P squared. We're rid of five P. That is our final answer. Okay. But when you do these, you do your numbers first and then you go and do the variables. Okay. So looking at the next one, we're gonna do our numbers first. So what can we divide 100 by? Okay, so 100 divided by 10 is 10. And then what can I divide 10 by? Five, so I get five and two. 
and five and two. Now remember, we want to make groups of two because of this little number in the cubby hole. So we're going to pull out five and we're going to pull out two. Okay. Yep. Go. We have three Bs and we want to make a group of two. So here's my group of two. It's going to be a V on the outside and then we're left with a V on the inside. So when we simplify, we're going to get 10 V square root of V. So 648, I can divide that by two, right? Okay, what is that going to give me? Pick up your calculator and take 648 and divide it by two. 324. And if I take 324 and I divide that by two, tell me what I get. And if I take 162 and I divide it by two, what do I get? 81. Is 81 divisible by something? Nine. Is nine divisible by something? Three. And I can do that for both of these. Okay, so notice how I completely broke down all of the factors. Okay. Now, well, we're not done yet. Right here, it says groups of three, right? We got groups of three. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a group of three. So we got these twos and these threes. So we have two times three cube root, and we're left with this three inside. Now, fun fact, with cube roots, we got this negative. Remember, we're going to pull that out to the front. All right, so now we've got six A's and we want to make groups of three. So how many groups are we going to have? So we have A squared. When we simplify this, this is going to give us negative six A squared cube root of three. Can you try this one? So we're going to take 56 and we're going to divide it by two. And so that's going to give us 28. We're going to divide 28 by 2. That's going to give us 14. Divide that again. We need a group of 3. So we've got three twos. So that's going to give us negative 4 cube root of 7 on the inside. There's three m's. We're going to pull one of those out. And then there's five n's. So we're going to pull one of those out. And we're left over with an n squared. So we get negative four m in cube root of seven n squared. 